you ever know what's going to come up when you are away from the school. After having been spoiled those five years as a Kansas superintendent, and then that one year as a two years as a college prof, I'd been to big meetings almost every year, big conferences with inspiring speakers and so on. Heck, I didn't have two years as a principal, lowly new principal in a big city district, a big country district adjoining a big city. But one time, just once, while I was in Jeffco, I was one of a few that were sent to something. I don't remember what it was, but the big deal was that, hey, my turn came up to go and get away from the, the local scene and hear some of the big boys talk. Well, there was an assembly scheduled. I've forgotten what they call those Lyceum type series where programs, speakers, entertainers of various kinds came to schools, but we had one coming for an all-school assembly, and I asked Woody if he would be the MC since I wouldn't be there, and he said, sure. Woody's a very, very talented fellow. I had no reservation at all about it being a problem. Got back, and at our first faculty meeting after, we had a weekly faculty meeting, if I remember right. First faculty meeting, after I got back, got through with the little itinerary I had. I had a policy. I knew people hate those meetings where the principal drones on and on and he'd bring somebody else up the drones on and on. God, what a waste of time because people are tired and want to get out of there and they're not paying much attention. So I'd gotten through with the routine things, the things that you know you need to say, announce, and then when we come into the open session, and our policy, my policy on the open session was you can bring up anything you want to. I tried not to dominate those, but if I really wanted something brought up that I didn't want to just make an announcement on, that's where I'd bring it up. Well, what I really got down to, the, the open session is where we really dealt with how to have a better school and how to eliminate something or add something or let's watch out for this or that and so on. So, my gosh, I just opened the open session, and two or three of the older ladies and more conservative members said, Hey, while you were gone, Mr. Wood let the student body go wild at that assembly. Well, I thought that's strange. I haven't heard anything before now about that, but okay. What'd they do? They got loud and boisterous. Some of them even whistled and shouted. Okay. You know, I'm perfectly ready to accept that and go on, you know. Maybe they, maybe they got a little louder than normal, and I don't know how good the entertainment was, but, you know, I've been in groups where there's some shouting and whistling and so on. And yes, if I'd been there, I'd probably said, hey, hey, that's enough. But Woody wasn't ready to drop it right there. He decided to defend himself. He pointed right at me and said, Have any of you been to a high school wrestling match with that man? Nobody had. If so, they wouldn't say so. Well, he said, That man and his wife at a wrestling match can make more noise than our entire student body was making. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Well, I couldn't, didn't know what it sounded like at the assembly, and Don and I do get loud at the wrestling matches, so, okay, next topic, moved on. I don't think I laughed. I don't think it might have been the right time to laugh. But those open sessions were where we really did the things and tackled the problems that made us a better functioning team and made us a much better team to effectively deal with the real problems that come up in a school. And I had a rule about it. When I'm through with that first part, and I, you know, I tried to keep it down to 10, 15 minutes. 
Then we go to the second part. If you don't want to stay, it's all right. Well, it soon got to where people realized that the real meeting was the meeting after the meeting. And there might have been one or two, I can't really remember, that just always left. And if they did, it certainly wasn't held against them in any way, because I don't even remember whether anybody did or didn't. But we really got at it. Sometimes it sounded like we're going to get ready to go to Fifth City. For example, there was the time, the topic I don't remember, but I remember that the faculty was pretty well split on an issue, and I was on one side of it with about half of the faculty, and Art Reese was kind of the spokesman for those on the other half, and boy, we were really arguing the case as to, it ought to be this way, it ought to be that way, and Bobby Morris, one of my favorite staff members, but, oh, that gal, if you got her cranked up, look out. She, when Art began to back off, she took up the cause. And I mean to tell you, then things heated up quite a bit more. Well, I didn't yield. Didn't yield. And when the faculty meeting broke up, there was a little tension still in the room, to say the least. <laughs> well, we're walking down the hall. Would have gone by my office as you go to the front door. But we're walking down that long hall, and Art walks up to me, and he said to me something, I don't know what, about something entirely related. It had nothing to do with the issue that had been so hotly discussed. And I gave him as courteous an answer as, you know, both of us understood the ground rules. <laughs> the, the game is over. We'll deal with that if we ever deal with it again when we deal with it. But it's over. Bobby Morse was behind us, and she walked up there and tapped that Art Reese on the shoulder and said, I bust my tail in there for you against this man, and you come out here and you're buddy-buddy. <laughs> that was our Bobby. By the next morning, she might have been still a little mad, but she was civil and back being a regular supportive staff member. But faculty members should be able to press their case. When all the power rests on the top dog, you're going to get into some trouble here and there that you wish you hadn't.